Thank you for that amazing introduction. I'm so pleased to have all of our audience members with us today and just delighted to get to have this conversation. As my colleagues will tell you, if I'm not talking about gender equality, I'm probably talking about sports or vice versa. And that makes sense because it is in the field of competition that I think we have one of the best chances to change perceptions of what girls and women can do and what they should get to do. And with uh, all the excellence of anybody else who is competing. And to have that discussion today, as our uh, introduction told you, we have Rose and Natalie, these extraordinary athletes who we're going to talk to today about their experiences and how they got to where they are now. So Rose, Natalie, it's so great to see you. Thank you for joining us. I'm so pleased to get to talk to you today. Great to see you too. Thank you for having us. Wonderful. Well, Natalie, you're an extraordinary race car driver. Tell us how you got into that field. Um, so I was um, involved in a car crash when I was 16 and became tetraplegic uh, after breaking my neck. Um, but it wasn't until 16 years later that I actually participated in my first race. And um, racing was really quite new to me. I, I came to it very late on. I had been a wheelchair rugby athlete um, since leaving university. And a chance track day, which... Um, a fellow wheelchair rugby teammate introduced me to, um, made me fall in love with the concept of driving quickly around race circuits. And uh, it was just something that kind of got out of control quite quickly. And, uh, you know, a few years later, I became a race car driver. So um, yeah, it was, it was a really kind of honest way of falling in love with something and following my passion. Oh, Natalie, I just love that. Rugby and race car driving. <laughs> oh, I love it. Well, Rose, tell us how you got into running and into becoming an Olympian. Okay, well, thank you so much for having me here. Uh, I'm a South Sudanese by nationality, and uh, it is my privilege to, to talk to you today. So uh, it was in 2014 that uh, the Tech La Lope Peace Foundations organized a race in Kakuma, whereby we have all the nationalities competing within the refugee camp. Then it happened that uh, I represent my country as a South Sudanese to emerge number one. And that one we had been just given a give. Then the big race now, it came in 2015 when the Tech La Lope and UNSCR come together to organize the race in Kakuma refugee, whereby we have to compete. Then I competed in 10 kilometer whereby I became number two. That is when I got the chance to come to the training camp in Nairobi. It wasn't that easy because we have to train hard. We only had six months before we went to Olympic. So we had been training together with my colleagues. Then it happened that I was the lucky one to be chosen as the first refugees Olympian to be competed in 2016 with other 10 refugees athletes. So we are so grateful to at least once the refugee has given chance to compete in a very big event like Olympics. So it was our privilege to have that chance of going to the Olympic and it was a great experience to us. Rose, what has sports meant for you? Uh, what opportunities has it provided that you don't think uh, you would have had otherwise? Well, uh, sport meant a lot to me and it is everything because it is my passion. I love it. And then the good experience that we had in Olympic is that uh, when I was selected as a flag bearer, that one has given us hope, especially to the refugees around the world. At least we feel that we are a human being, whereby all the countries and plus the president of IOC, Thomas Bach, who are cheering for us, at least we feel we are human being. And, that had given chance to all the refugees around the world to show their talents to participate because uh, refugees also are human beings and they can do what others are doing. That's amazing, Rose. It's amazing, Rose. Natalie, similar question for you. I mean, how, what do you think that sports has done, given you what opportunities for equality do you think it's given you that you might not have other half? And what do you think it means for other girls and women who want to compete? Um, for me, sport is, um, is really important. Um, after breaking my neck, um, I became kind of defined by my weaknesses. Um, I was, you know, identified as a wheelchair user and someone who couldn't do a lot of things. 
when I first started playing wheelchair rugby and got into sport, that completely changed. And I was an athlete. I wasn't defined by my disability anymore. I was defined by how, how tough I was willing to push myself to achieve the top level in any of the sports that I had um, chosen to participate in. So I would say in a way that sport was the, the vehicle, if you like, that allowed me to deal with my, my injury and allowed me to kind of progress and, and move on from what happened to me. But I think for a lot of women, I think that this is probably a similar story. Obviously not everyone's disabled or refugee, but I think sport allows women to excel and where we have social um, stereotypes which associate women with weakness, sports associates women with strength. And I think that young girls and women really, really excel when we start to play sport and we start to show that we are athletes and that we are strong and that we can achieve just as much as men can. Absolutely. And Rose, I think uh, your experience proves the same thing. You've overcome hardship and discrimination. Do you think sports is a, a place where we can bring people together and, uh, and, and level the playing field? Yes, well, uh, I think uh, the power of sport has changed the lives of refugees around the world, especially to the young girls and boys, whereby since we had been given that chance to expose our talents to the world, uh, it has really changed the life of especially the young girls. Like our girls now in Kakuma had been inspired by us for those who went to Olympic because, you know, sometimes, uh, especially for Africans, they say uh, only men can do sport, they can engage in sport. But at least now we have been showing the example to the girls, what a man can do, also a girl can do. So it is good at least sport has bring people together by interacting with so many nationalities and it brings peace to, to people around the world. Absolutely, Rose. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, I'm, I'm curious, you have both broken extraordinary barriers. You have proven yourself to be the most exceptional of competitors. Uh, Natalie, what would you, what kind of headline would you like to see next? What kind of barrier would you like to see a, a girl or a woman break in sports? For me, I, I don't think I can give you a specific headline, but what I would really like to see is headlines that just exclude gender. Because when we see headlines about successful women, the gender is always cited. You know, first female to break this record, first successful female to have made it in a business sense. Whereas men don't, the headlines are just the man's name. They're not prefaced with male. So I think that if in the future we can have headlines that just cite the woman's name without having to specifically identify the gender, then we will have come a long way. Indeed, indeed. And Rose, tell me, similar question. What would you like to see for the world's refugee girls? What would you want, what, what are your hopes for them? Uh, well, I want to, I want to see more opportunities for girls and boys to do more sport uh, for, for the training programs and scholarship and sport clubs. Also, um, I want to see more refugees, uh, especially girls, engage in uh, livelihoods activities, uh, including uh, small business that they can make, at least also to support their family, also doing some other agriculture ventures, and then and also uh, saving some schemes for the for the family, yeah. So uh, at least they can be able to support themselves and also the family as well. In addition to education opportunities, activities like this helps uh, to protect girls uh, from from sexual and gender based violence. At least if they engage in those sports, especially when when we have a long time of. Uh, engaging in sport, you can have that time of lottering around, at least we can able to know what to do, uh, at least to change your life, especially to sport, whereby you can interact with so many people while you are doing sport, because sport has changed the lives of refugees. Sports has changed the life of refugees, and it has given us you an extraordinary example of that. You've both just beautifully encapsulated our theme today 
equal everywhere, equal in life, equal on the field of play, equal in the economy, equal at home. I'm really grateful to you both. I am, I celebrate you on International Women's Day. I celebrate your triumphs and thank you so much for sharing them with our audience. Thank you. Thank you.